Example 3. Only difference with this one is that we need to first solve for y. Okay, so the first step on this one is solve for y. Why? Because you have to um, write up a table to, to plot your points. So first solve for y, two, we graph the lines and, um, you know, get the slope and the intercept of each one and um, get the point of intersection, okay? So the first step is solve for y. Now, you know, what do I do? Well, I take the first one, x plus y equals 5. I write it over here. I take the next line. I go x minus y equals negative 3. I write it right over here. I need to solve for y on this equation, and I need to solve for y in this equation. If I get y by itself here, I've got to subtract x from both sides, right? Now, 5 minus x, so x minus x on the left leaves me simply with y on the left-hand side. 5 minus x, these are not like terms, okay? They're not like terms, so I cannot, you know, subtract them. So I just write them beside each other. Now, that's 5 minus x. That, we, we need to have our equations in this form. y equals mx plus b, don't we? It has to be looking like this, y equals mx plus b. So we need the x term on the left and the um, b term on the right. Now, the point about this guy is, and you've got to think of this, look, if I had 5 minus 3, what's 5 minus 3? It's 2, isn't it? Isn't that the same thing as, and, and we know from math 60 that we can change subtraction to plus negative, subtract equals, you know, uh, plus negative, I can change this to plus negative, and it'll say negative 3 plus 5. Now, what's negative 3 plus 5? It's also positive 2, right? So 5 minus 3 is the same thing as negative 3 plus 5, isn't it? 5 minus 3 became negative 3. So 5 minus x can also be written, change this plus negative, can also be written negative x plus 5, okay? So what, we have y equals negative x plus 5. And if I want to read the slope of the y-intercept, that would be, what would this be as a coefficient? It would be negative 1x plus 5, okay? So the reason I write it like that is because, obviously, now my slope is negative 1, my y-intercept is 5, okay? So m is negative 1, b is 5. And then I, to graph this line, I do a table, okay? So graph that line. Press pause and graph that line. So when you uh, did your calculations, you should have got uh, 0, 5, 1, 4, 2, 3, 3, 2. So it should be negative 1 times 0 plus 5 is 0 plus 5, negative 1 plus 5, negative 2 plus 5. So this should have worked out like this. And press pause and check your answer if it didn't. Then when you plotted your points, you should have got these points. If you didn't get that, press pause and, and figure out your mistake. And obviously the points should also keep going in the same direction, in other words, run one, rise negative one. Run over one, down one, over one, down one, over one, down one, over one, down one, okay? And then we should draw a line through the points like this. And this line should be called y equals, and I found negative one x plus five. And you should give the slope and the y-intercept of the line. And of course, the slope is this number negative one. The y-intercept is this number 5. It goes through the y-axis at 5, doesn't it? And my rise over run for this line is, of course, run 1, go down 1. Go over 1, down 1. So run 1, rise negative 1, and that calculates to be negative 1. So the slope is negative 1, the y-intercept is 5, of course. And now we've got to solve for y on the green equation. So we've got to solve for y here. Okay. So press pause and try that. And then check to see if you got the same answer as I did. Okay, now I'm going to do it. I need to solve for y. I have you know, x minus y. Uh, what's been done to y? It's actually been multiplied by a negative 1. See that? And then x has been added on because this subtraction is the same as plus negative. So it's like s x plus a negative 1y. So it's been multiplied by a negative 1, and then x has been added. So the first, I do the last operation first. The last, the first thing done to y, it's multiplied by a negative 1. The next thing done to y is add x. So I've got to get rid of the x first. Subtract x from both sides first. 
and now I have negative 1y equals negative 3 minus x and you can write that or even better because you want it in y equals mx plus b form how else can you write it? negative x minus 3 right? Now, y has been multiplied by negative 1. I don't want negative y. I want positive y. I need positive y, not negative y. That doesn't work. Now, how do I get positive y? I've got to divide by negative 1 everywhere, right? And we have practiced this. We should know it. Divide everything by negative 1. This is positive y equals 1x or you know x and then negative 3 over negative 1. Negative over negative gives a positive. That's a negative 3 over negative 1 gives a positive 3, right? So it's y equals x plus 3. What's the coefficient on x there? Write in the coefficient. Coefficient shall be 1. So your slope is 1, your y-intercept is 3. See that? Now do a table and graph this line. Press pause and, and try that and then check to see if you got the same thing as me. So you should have thought to plug in something like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, x, calculate y being 3, 4, 5, 6, and if you couldn't do that, you can go ahead and do it now and check it, press pause and do it, and then you should be able to plot these points, and you should get this line here, okay, and label it y equals 1x plus 3, and if you haven't got this, just press pause and try it, okay, and then give the slope and the y-intercept. The slope is the coefficient of x, the slope is 1, the y-intercept is this number here, the y-intercept is 3. Okay, So obviously it goes through, through 3 on the y-axis, the y-intercept is 3. See, The slope is 1, and if I check that, you know, rise over run is equal to, and if I take two points, see, I take these points, I'm going run 1, rise 1. And I almost go from left to right, so run 1, rise 1. Run 1, rise 1. So my run is 1, my rise is 1. The slope of the line obviously checks out to be 1. So I'm just drilling it home that, you know, this is always the slope. This is always the y-intercept. You should be able to see that from your line. Now find the point of intersection. Press pause and find the point of intersection. Point of intersection, you should have found that it is this point. Okay. Now, what is that point? It is, uh, every point is x comma y and this point is turning out to be x is, or x is 1, isn't it? x is 1, and y is 4, y is 4. So 1, 4, that's my point of intersection. And I'm going to check that for both lines. Check the point of intersection, 1, 4, for both lines. And, you know, I can use the table for that. It's real handy. Um, so, you know, obviously my point of intersection was 1, 4. How do I check that in the tables? Well, how you check that is you plug 1 in for x, you calculate y and see if you get 4. So, I plug 1 in for x and calculate for y to see if I get 4. Plug 1 in for x, calculate for y, and we've already done it. I mean, if I plug 1 in for x, I simply go negative 1 times x plus uh, 5, negative 1 times 1, plus 5, and that does calculate to be 4, because it's negative 1 plus 5, right? And of course, I mean, I have it up here already anyway. If I plug 1 in for x, uh, my y is going to be 1 times 1 plus 3, and of course, that gives me 4, okay? So I again, I have 1, 4, and of course, I had it up here anyway, so you didn't even need to do that. Just, you know, show, oh, here, here it is. It had checked out in both equations already, right? Anyway, point of intersection works for both lines. Um, so we are correct. Now let's have a look at now let's have a look at example four. And in this example, we have you know how do you make a table with these guys? We're kind of stuck, aren't we? Because look, our y is you know stuck here and here. Now we said that there are two steps to these guys. You solve for y, and then you graph the lines and do all the other stuff. Okay. So the first step is to solve for y. Now, the lines might be given to you on top of each other. That's not a problem. Just write them like this. One over here. One over here. See that? Just write them like that. Solve for y on this equation. Solve for y on this equation. One at a time. Okay? Uh, so I'm going to start with the blue one. 
Now, of course, my y is all the way on the right-hand side. It's not even on the left-hand side. But in any case, we can just get y by itself. y is being multiplied by 3, then 9x is being subtracted. So the last operation is subtract 9x, so that's the one we're going to undo first. How do you undo subtracting 9x? Do you add 9x to both sides, right? Add 9x to both sides. So we have 0 here, so on the right-hand side I have 3y. Now, on the left-hand side I have negative 6 plus 9x. You can write that if you like, it might be less confusing. But in any case, okay, negative 6 plus 9x, right? Now, why is being multiplied by 3? How do I undo multiplying by 3? Divide by 3, don't I? And I need to divide everything by 3. And just to remind you why that is, just in case you're wondering, just once again, look, I'll, I'll put you this way. If I told you that 3 melons cost the same amount, okay, cost the same amount as nine apples, okay, and um, um, let's say three melons cost the same as nine apples and um, three bananas, okay. You need to, if you divide the left-hand side by three to get one melon, if you do that, you must divide everything on the right by 3 as well. Here's the reason. If I divide everything by 3, I get this new equation which says 1 melon equals 9 over 3, of course, is 3. That gives me 3 apples, isn't it? What's 3 over 3? 1, right? 1 banana. I get this new equation which says 1 melon is the same cost as 3 apples plus 1 banana. My question is, like, this one makes sense, right? My point is, if this is true, if, if, if this is a fact that three melons is the same cost as nine apples and three bananas, then surely one melon would be, you know, three of these apples and then one banana, wouldn't it? One melon would definitely cost the same as three apples and one banana. Doesn't that make sense in your mind? Right, and when we divide everything by three, that's what we found. One melon costs the same as three apples plus one banana. So that's why we divide everything by three. And the same goes for, you know, theoretical examples like this. If I divide the right-hand side by 3, I must divide everything by 3. Not just the 9, not just the 6, but everything. And so I calculate negative 6 over 3 is negative 2. 9 over 3 is 3, three so 3x, three and that is equal to y. Oh, my goodness, the y is on the right-hand side. So just put it on the left-hand side. y equals, now hold on a second, negative 2 plus 3x. Don't I like my equations to be in the form y equals mx plus b, so I can read off the slope of the y-intercept, right? Well, right, 3x plus negative 2, or 3x minus 2, that's the same thing. 3x is positive, the 2 is negative, so this is correct. Now, the next step is going to be simply making a table, uh, getting points, and plotting the blue line. So we're going to plot blue line, and of course, then we need to do the green line, okay? So, um, let's just solve for y over here next, and then we'll plot both lines at the same time. How about that? If I solve for y here, okay, I have this situation, x minus 2y. I can change this subtraction to plus negative. Now it says x plus negative 2y. So what's being done to y? y has been multiplied by negative 2, and then x has been added on. So the last thing done is adding on the x, so I need to get rid of the x first. I need to subtract x from both sides at, to begin with, okay? So I get um, negative 3 minus x on the left-hand side. These x's cross cancel, and I have negative 2y here, and this negative must stay here. You have to have a negative down here, okay? Now, y has been multiplied by negative 2. To get it by itself, I need to divide by negative 2 everywhere, right? And yeah, at this point, you might actually like to use um, decimals because it's going to be easier to calculate. But in any case, we'll start. We'll do fractions and then decimals. But this is negative 3 over negative 2. Negative over negative gives us positive 3 over 2. Okay, this is negative x over negative 2. Negative over negative gives us 
positive x over 2, okay? And that is equal to negative over negative gives positive. 2 over 2 gives 1. So this is 1y or y, right? Oh, my goodness, y is on the right-hand side. No big deal. Put it on the left-hand side. y equals, okay? And write this thing in mx plus b form. Now, remember that this is 1 times x over 2, which is the same thing as a half times x plus 3 over 2. I like to write it like this because then I can read off my slope and my y-intercept. Then I just need to make a table for this guy, and then I can uh, keep going. You might like to use decimals to make your table with. 1 divided by 2 in decimals is 0 0.5, so this is 0 0.5x plus 3 over 2 is 1.5, okay? So you might need, like to do that when you're making your table. Plug in 0, 1, 2, 3 for x and see what happens. And then calculate your y's, okay? So let's plot both lines. So press pause in your video and plot both lines. So when I did this, I plugged in 0, 1, 2, 3 for the x's, and I calculated my y's to be, you know, 3 times parentheses minus 2 all the way down. So I got, you know, 0 minus 2, 3 minus 2, 6 minus 2, 9 minus 2. I got negative 2, 1, 4, 7, okay? On this one, I plugged in 0, 1, 2, 3 for the x's, and then I calculated 0 0.5 times 0 plus 1.5, 0 0.5 times 1 plus 1.5, 0 0.5 times 2 plus 1.5, and then I got all these things, and then I add them up, and this should be... 1.5 here. This should be 0.5 and 1.5 makes 2. 1 plus 1.5 is 2.5. 1.5 plus 1.5 is 3. So I got those points. So when I plot these, um, obviously the blue line should give me 0, negative 2, 1, 1, 2, oops, the daisies. 1, 1 is not there. 1, 1 is up. Here, my mistake, I made a mistake there. One, um, two, four, uh, three, seven, and so on. So my points obviously are going over one, up three, over one, up three, over one, up three. Run one, rise three. And of course, if I, you know, my rise over run, if I just want to check that right away, I mean, I'm running 1, I'm rising 3, so the slope is obviously 3, and I can see that m equals 3 from the equation, right? So in any case, I uh, join up the points for this equation, and this, of course, is y equals 3x minus 2, so give the slope and the y-intercept for this. And again, you know, the line goes through the y-axis at negative 2, and we can see that this negative 2 is our b in the equation. The slope is rise over run, which is 3 over 1, which gives 3. And, of course, we can find that from the, the line. The slope is 3, right? And then with the green line, you know, if you plot, plot the green line, you get uh, 0, 1.5, 1, 2... Uh, 2, 2.5, 3, 3. So we get this funny situation. But, um, you know, if, if you take, say, this point and um, this point, um, you run to rise 1. Run to rise 1. See that? Run to rise 1. So I'm running to rise 1. But in any case, if I draw a line through the points, and let's just pause. So if I join up these points, I get this line here, which of course is um, y equals uh, 1 half x plus 3 over 2, uh, or 0 0.5x plus 1.5, whichever you want to you want to, however way you want to, to look at it. But just to check off the, you know, off the graph, does the does the green line go through 3 over 2 on the y-axis? Yes, it does. That's 1.5, same thing. So our b, of course, is definitely 3 over 2. And again, I when I did my rise over run, checking the rise over run, to, I, would, I would run 2 and then rise 1. See, that? I would run 2, rise 1. So I run 2, rise 1, and that was my slope, m. So I've just checked that, of course, m for this line is a half, okay? And we can see that m is a half for this line anyway. Um, now, we have a 
If you grab, grab these carefully, you can see that the point of intersection is a little bit of a muddle. It's not exact. So th this might shouldn't happen very often in your homework, but the point of intersection here, it's not, you think it's going to be, you know, 1, 2, but it's not 1, 2. It's a little bit, you know, further on the X. So I'm guessing about 1.3 guessing it and then the y is a little bit higher I'm going to guess 2.2 uh, so it's not 1 th 1 2 it's 1.3 2.2 something close to that isn't it you know so this is our point of intersection and this is you know complicated and and it it, it lends this it's it it tells us that there's got to be a better way of doing some of these graphs than some of these problems rather than graphing them. Graphing is a great visual tool, but it's not sometimes it's not perfectly accurate because I can't read exactly is that 1.3 or is it is it 1.2 or you know is it what is it? I can't really I'm just guessing on these decimals. So there are other ways to do it and we'll see in the next sections how to solve these uh, solve two equations by algebra we're going to see something called solving by substitution which will give us the exact um, answer and the other way of doing it is graphing with a graphing calculator and there's a video to show you how to do that as well which will give you the exact answer for this problem for example okay and so you know that's our point of intersection like you know an estimated point of intersection and then if we check that in the table sorry about the uh, zoom so if I, if I check that in the uh, table I'll be plugging in the X value calculating the Y and it should come out at least close so if I plug in you know 1.3 in for X and then calculate the Y what happens well, I get 3 times x minus 2. So 3 times 1.3 minus 2 on that, e on that equation <coughs> should give me, this is um, 3.9 minus 2, which gives me, you know, 1.9. So, yeah, that's not great, is it? It's of x 1.3, y turned out to be 1.9. When I wanted it to be 2.2, didn't I? Because my point of intersection was guessed at, I guess my point of intersection to be 1.3 um, and 2.2. So, you know, it wasn't a great guess. And then <laughs> if x is 1.3, it should work out on this one. So, you know, 0 0.5 times 1.3 plus 1.5, uh, check that. So if I check this, I should calculate that to be 0 0.5 times 1.3 is um, 0 0.65, and then add that to 1.5, and I'm getting um, 2.15. So that's a little bit closer to, to my guess of 2.2 on the Y here. So, but again, it, it's close, but it's not perfect. And that's because I'm graphing by hand and I'm guessing what that decimal is. So you can see graphing by hand is not totally accurate at all. But it's nice to see them visually in any case. And once again, we have a graphing calculator that can give us the exact answer. And we can also solve by substitution in the next section, which will also give us the exact answer for this problem.